Hey guys, and welcome to a tutorial on Terraria 1.3.1's new logic gates. Um, for these to work, uh, basically, you just need some logic gates and some logic gate lamps. Um, these are all purchasable from the Steam Bunker, so yes, they are technically hard mode items. Um, but all you have to do is buy them, you don't have to do any uh, crafting. Just so you can see, this is my current setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain just kind of how everything works um, in terms of just how the logic gates and every and the lamps and everything connect and how they send out signals and stuff. And then I'm just going to explain each one's uh, logic. So if you already understand logic, you don't have to watch the end of this video. But if you're curious about how the AND works versus the OR versus the XOR, etc., then I will be explaining all of that as well. But just for starters, I'm going to take this AND gate, and I'll explain it very briefly now and go more in depth a little bit later. Basically, for its signal to change, it needs every lamp on it to be either um, on, or for it to go from having all of the lamps on to not having all of them on. So I'll explain that a little bit better, a little bit better later. Um, right now though, um, I placed two lamps right next to it. Um, and so the thing with these lamps is you can't really just like place them wherever. You do need to place them so that they're connected to a gate or another lamp which is connected to a gate. And when you do that, it will automatically get lined up. So as you can see with the wiring, there's no same color wire that runs down here to connect them all or whatever. Um, they're automatically connected just by placing them. So again, it's a gate and a few lamps. You can start with the on or off lamp. It doesn't matter. Just know that... Um, you know, they are different items, just like an active stone block is different from an inactive stone block. But if you change the state of it and then break it, you'll get the other one. So if I change this off to on and then broke it, I would get an on back. Um, so it's pretty simple. That's basically everything you need to know about putting this together. And then you just need to know how to, you know, kind of take the wire here so it lines up with actuators or traps, make sure you have, you know, levers or the new big gem holders, something to change the signal of the lamps, um, and then just make sure you actually take the signal from the gate itself when you want to change something in your map. Um, so the signal goes into the lamps to change the lamps, then when the conditions of the logic for the gate are met, its signal will change, and then you just take a wire and carry out that signal wherever you want to go. So with that out of the way, I'm going to start explaining the actual logic of this. So for this one, this is AND, um, which means it's all or, um, well it's all for it to be true, and if it's not all, it's false. So turning one on does not change its state, it's still false. However, if both are on, it's now true, and you can see it sent out its signal. Now if you go from having them all on to not having them all on, um, which in this case is just going to be turning one of them off, not necessarily both. Um, it's going to go from true to false, which will toggle everything again. So that's it for and. Um, other than actually, it's actually worth mentioning, now that I'm thinking about it, and can support more than just two. So you can have a bunch of these. And it doesn't matter which one you turn off, it will do the toggle every time. And because the traps have a cooldown, if you're trying to see the signal I'm sending, I'll watch the actuated blocks over here instead because these actually change every single time, whereas the traps have to wait a little while before they work. Now that's the AND gate. Um, and I'm going to show you the N AND gate really quickly. Um, I'm only going to explain one of these N types um, because once you kind of see how it works, you'll understand all of them. So the difference between AND and N AND has nothing to do with the amount of um, lamps that need to be on or off. Instead, when an AND gate is true, an N AND gate is false. And uh, the same thing goes when it's false, it's true. So um, basically, it's the exact opposite of an AND gate. So the uh, N OR is the opposite of OR, and the N XOR is the exact opposite of the XOR. Um, so when the AND was true, which is when all of them were on, it would send out an active signal. Right now, this N AND gate is actually sending out an active signal, and changing, you know, these two won't change that. It's currently true, and when I flip this third switch, it actually becomes false. So right now it's not sending out a signal, as you can see, it's all dark right here. And if any of these change, it goes from false back down to true. So now we're gonna move on to OR. OR is a bit different than AND. Um, the main thing with OR is it's going to be toggling very, very often um, 
because you go from none, where it's false, to turning one on, and that satisfies the conditions. One is now on, um, and so now it's true, and changing it to two does nothing because it's already true. So this is true because or basically says at least one gate is on, or one lamp is on, sorry. So if at least one lamp is on, it's true. Um, so here, not true. Or here it's true, it's still true. Um, the only way it will ever not be true is if for all of them to be off, like that. So this will be constantly toggling, this will be constantly toggling, but this will not change the actual output of the gate at all. The last one is XOR. XOR is really, really interesting. And for as often as OR will be toggling on and off, XOR will be toggling on and off so much more. Um, XOR is very specifically one lamp needs to be on. So this is false, this is true, and this is false. So exactly one has to be on. It does not matter which one. As you can see here, this will count as true. This will count as true. Um, but this will always be false, and having none of them will always be false. So now, just kind of to show the most useful one. Uh, I've already gone over the ones I'm going to, but just so you know, the AND gate is definitely going to be the most useful, uh, in my opinion, for like adventure maps. The AND gate is basically just used so that you can line up so many different puzzles from other rooms and have them all lead in so that each puzzle has one thing that will activate the lamp. And then once you've completed, you know, in this case, all four of the puzzles, I should probably have this kind of reversed, huh? Once you complete all four of the puzzles, which in this case, this will be the last puzzle, you know, then it opens the door and you can keep moving on. So the AND gate will be very, very useful there. And I think it's a great addition for adventure maps for sure. Now, the one thing I didn't cover in my video was the faulty lamps. Now, I'm not 100% sure how they work, which is why I didn't cover them. Basically, it says they randomize the activation. So here, I have an AND gate. I have this lamp off, this one on, and this lever connects to the faulty one. So now the faulty lamp, if I turn it on, it will turn that on, and then off, but then it won't turn it back on, and then it is basically random right now. However, if I turn this on, it will very, very consistently be turning it on, off, on, off. If I change this, it will again be kind of randomizing the activation, like it says. So if it doesn't necessarily meet the requirements here, as you can see, this is an AND gate and it should have all of them on before it changes. You can use this faulty lamp and it will basically be random. However, if it looks like it meets the conditions otherwise, I'm pretty sure every time you toggle the faulty lamp, no matter what, it will change the activation directly. No, not randomize, but just change. And the other thing that's interesting about them um, is that they don't actually have their own on and off state. So, as you can see here, the lamp, um, for this to be satisfied, requires this one right here to be on, and this one to be on. Um, so if I turn this on, as you can see, this isn't changing anything. Now, if this faulty lamp was considered on, then, you know, the wall would open because the requirements are being met. So obviously it must be set to off, so I'll turn this off, now I'll flip it so it goes on, and turn it on, and nothing happens. Um, so as you can see, um, if that made sense, basically the faulty lamps don't store an on or off, they just get toggled and then randomize the activation as it says, or just straight up change the activation um, if all the other requirements are actually met. At least for the AND gate, I haven't experimented with the others too much. Um, just know the faulty lamps are kind of weird and I didn't want to say anything too too concrete about them but this is how they're working very basically I don't see a lot of application for them but they could definitely mess with players and puzzles um, but that is pretty much it that is everything I wanted to cover in this video it went a little bit longer than I wanted it to but hopefully I explained everything uh, that I could if you have any questions or any really cool builds with these that you want to show, definitely leave a comment or send me a message through YouTube. Uh, it goes straight to my email, so I will be able to read it and respond. And yeah, that, that's it. Thanks for watching.